Chapter 9.3, Properties of Rectangles, Rhombuses, and Squares. First, let's look at a def the definition of a rectangle. A rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles, as you can see in the picture over here. Un rectángulo es un cuadrilátero con cuatro ángulos rectos. Now, the first thing we're going to go over is a proof, uh, a proof that shows that diagonals in a rectangle are congruent. Let's look right here where it says properties of rectangles. If a quadrilateral is a rectangle, then it is a parallelogram. If a parallelogram is a rectangle, then its diagonals are congruent. So if a parallelogram is a rectangle, its diagonals are congruent. Aquí dice propiedades de rectángulos. Si un cuadrilátero es un rectángulo, entonces tiene que ser un paralelogramo. Y si un paralelogramo es un rectángulo, entonces los diagonales son congruentes. Los diagonales son congruentes. So in example one, it says, use a rectangle to prove the properties of rectangle theorems. It says, given that ABCD is a rectangle, prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. And also, there's two things we got to prove. You also got to prove that segment AC is congruent to segment BD. In other words, prove that diagonal AC is congruent to diagonal BD. All right, so we're going to prove that here. And this is on your homework. Okay, um, dice que ABCD es un rectángulo. Tenemos que comprobar dos cosas. Primero que ABCD es un paralelogramo y después que lo, el, los diagonales AC es congruente a segmento BD, que los diagonales son congruentes. All right, so first thing they put is the given information. ABCD is a rectangle. Then angle A and angle C are right angles. Why? Because that's the definition of a rectangle. A rectangle has four right angles. So angles A and C are right angles, and angle A is congruent to angle C because all right angles are congruent. Then they did the exact same thing with angles B and D. Angle B and D are right angles. How do we know that? Because that's the definition of a rectangle. And therefore, angle B is congruent to angle D because all right angles are congruent. Now in step six, They've already proven everything that you need to show in order to prove that this is a parallelogram. Because as we learned in the previous chapter, chapter 9.2, once you prove that both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then that proves that the quadrilateral has to be a parallelogram. All right, again, once you prove that the opposite angles, that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Let me say up to there in Spanish before I continue in, uh, with the rest of the steps. Así que en los primeros seis pasos enseñaron que, que ABCD es un paralelogramo. ¿Cómo lo hicieron? Ok, primero enseñaron que ángulo A y ángulo C son, um, son ángulos rectos. Ok, y como ángulos A y ángulo C son ángulos rectos porque eso es la definición de un rectángulo. Y si son ángulos rectos, eso quiere decir que ángulo A es congruente a ángulo C, porque todos los ángulos rectos son congruentes. Después hicieron lo mismo con ángulo B y D. Y a la vez que enseñaron que los dos pares de ángulos opuestos son congruentes, como aprendimos en el capítulo 9.2, a la vez que uno enseña que los dos pares de ángulos opuestos de un cuadrilátero son congruentes, entonces, eso quiere decir que el cuadrilátero tiene que ser un paralelogramo. Ok, step 7. Um, AD is congruent to BC. How do we know that? Because if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. That's step 7. Ok, so a AD is congruent to uh, BC. In um, segment, I'm sorry, in uh, statement 8. Segment DC is congruent to segment DC by the reflexive property. Angles D and angle C are right angles because of the definition of a rectangle. So that means that angle D is congruent to angle C because all right angles are congruent. So if you look at the picture, they prove that this side is congruent to this side. This angle is congruent to this angle. And that this side 
is congruent to this side in these two triangles, which which make up uh, rectangle ABCD. All right, so therefore the two triangles are congruent, and once you prove that these two triangles are congruent, you could pick whatever corresponding parts you want. In this case, they picked um, you know what what we needed, which is this side congruent to this side. And they put CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, this is on your homework. If you have any issue with this proof, just look at the video for guidance. Okay, así que en el paso um, siete, okay, um, el rectángulo lo partieron en dos triángulos, okay, y dicen primero que el lado AD es congruente al lado CB. Porque si un cuadrilátero es un paralelogramo, entonces los lados opuestos tienen que ser congruentes. Paso 8. Dice que DC es congruente a DC por la propiedad reflexiva. En el 9, ángulo D y ángulo C son ángulos rectos, porque eso es la definición de un rectángulo. Así que ángulo D es congruente a ángulo C, porque todos los ángulos rectos son congruentes. Ok, así que ya... Con eso comprobaron que este lado es congruente a este lado, este ángulo a este ángulo y este lado a este lado. Así que por lado, ángulo, lado, lado, ángulo, lado, los dos triángulos son congruentes. Así que en el último paso pueden decir que este lado aquí que corresponde a este lado aquí tiene que ser congruente porque las partes correspondientes de triángulos congruentes son congruentes. All right, so they prove that these two triangles are congruent by SAS, Triangle Congruence Theorem, side angle side. All right, so let's look at our first math problem here. We got to find DB. Find the measure of DB if uh, AD is 7.5 and DC is 10. DC is 10. All right, so let me explain how you're going to do this. You're going to need to use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, how am I going to do that? All right, let me write this again. This side is 7.5, and this side right here is 10, all right? Okay, now this is obviously a rectangle, okay, because all four angles are 90 degree angles. All four angles are right angles. So if in a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find side AC. And whatever AC is, DB has to be the same amount. All right, so remember, when, whenever you have a right angle, you could use the Pythagorean theorem to find the side that's missing. The C side is always the hypotenuse. All right, so if I have this, this side is 7.5 and this side is 10. All right, I'm going to substitute 7.5 for A and 10 for B to, uh, to solve for the side that's missing. All right, so 7.5 squared plus 10 squared equals C squared. Okay, uh, give me one moment to use the calculator to do 7.5 squared. All right, so this gives me 56.25. 10 squared is 100. All right, so 100 plus 56.25 is 156.25. All right, but I don't want C squared. I want to know what C is. So to get C, I got to get the square root of 156.25. All right, so C is going to equal, one moment, twelve point five. All right, so that means that this side right here is twelve point five. Now let's go back to the top. All right, let me just change the color here. All right, so if if this side right here, AC, is twelve point five. Okay, again, in a rectangle, <coughs> excuse me, the diagonals are congruent. So if this line is 12.5, that means that this line is also 12.5. All right, so that's my answer, 
because the, the diagonals, they're both going to be the same. They're going to be equal, congruent. Okay? Así que en este problema, tenemos que encontrar la medida de ángulo DB, pero con la información que me dieron, lo que encontré primero es eh, la medida del de diagon diagonal AC, del lado AC o el segmento AC. La razón es que en un rectángulo, los diagonales son congruentes. Así que a la vez que sé cuánto mide AC, DB tiene que ser la misma cosa. Y la razón que encontré AC es porque me dieron la medida de este lado y de este lado. Así que puedo um, usar el teorema Pythagorean para encontrar el lado que, que falta en un triángulo recto. ¿Ok? Así que... Um, a a la 2 más B a la 2 es igual a C a la 2. Recuerden que el lado de C siempre es la hipotenusa, que es el lado que está opuesto al ángulo recto. ¿Ok? Hipotenusa. Remember the C side is always the hipotenusa. ¿Ok? Así que sustituí 7.5 para A y 10 para B. Y el resultado me dio 12.5, que es la medida de AC y también de DB. All right, let's go to number six, which is going to be similar. And by the way, another way you could have done it, I mean, it's the same thing, but you could have said, okay, since this side is 7.5, that means this side is also 7.5. And since this side is 10, you could have said this side is 10. Okay, I mean, either way, you're going to end up doing the same thing, okay? But you could have also looked at it that way, okay? También pueden haber... Lo pueden haber hecho de esta manera, que si este lado es 7.5, este, este lado también es 7.5. Y si este lado es 10, este también es 10. Al final terminan haciendo la misma cosa. Ok, pero esa es otra manera de mirar el problema. All right, so number 6. AB is 17. And BC is 12.75. So we got to find DB. I mean, this is the same thing like in reverse, all right? Esto es la misma cosa, pero ahora me voy a encontrar AC y eso va a ser igual que DB. All right, so anyways, um, I have this. Again, the C side is always opposite the, the 90 degree angle. The side opposite the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse, which is the C side. Okay, el lado opuesto del ángulo recto es la hipotenusa que es el lado de la letra C. And the other two sides are A and B. Los otros dos lados son A y B. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 17 to the second power plus 12.75 to the second power equals C squared. All right, so let me use the calculator real quick. All right, so I got 289 plus 16, uh, this is a long one, but 16, I'm sorry, 162.5625. I probably could just round that, but whatever, just in case, let me write the whole thing. All right, so when I add that together, I get 451.5625. And in order to find out what C is, again, I got to get the square root of that number. Para encontrar lo que es C, tengo que coger la raíz cuadrada de este número, que me va a dar 21.25. All right, so that means that AC, AC is 21.25. And DB has to be the same thing, okay? AC mide 21.25, así que DB tiene que medir igual. All right, moving on. All right, now let's look at a rhombus. A rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides, okay? So it does not necessarily have to have 90 degree angles. Just all four sides are equal to each, like, 
Like this side equals this side equals this side equals this side. It's not just opposite sides, but all four sides are equal. All four sides are congruent. All right. So keep that in mind so that you don't confuse it. It's all of them are equal. All of them got to measure the same amount in a rhombus. Okay. And un rombo, un rombo es un cuadrilátero con cuatro lados congruente. Los cuatro lados tienen que ser congruente. Okay. Y no es necesario que los ángulos sean recto. Okay, just one second. Okay, so like I said, a rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. Here we have a rhombus. Okay, and what we're gonna do here is prove that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular, not congruent, perpendicular. Before we do that, let's first look at the properties of, of rhombuses. If a quadrilateral is a rhombus, then it is a parallelogram. If a parallelogram is a rhombus, then its diagonals are perpendicular. And if a parallelogram is a rhombus, then each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. If a parallelogram is a rhombus, then each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. Remember, bisects means it goes through the middle of opposite angles. Um, listen, do, do I expect you to have all, the, all these little details memorized? No. All right, but a lot of the main parts as you do the problems will just uh, hopefully <laughs> stick to your brain, all right, and be easy to remember. But don't worry too much about memorizing all these details. I think you'll rem I think as you see the problems, it'll make sense, okay? Um, en español, lo, las propiedades de un rombo. Si un cuadrilátero es un rombo, entonces tiene que ser un paralelogramo. Si un paralelogramo es un rombo, entonces los diagonales son perpendicular. Y si un paralelogramo es un rombo, Entonces, los diagonales bisectan un par de ángulos opuestos. No, déjame decir eso mejor, el último. Si el paralelogramo es un rombo, entonces cada diagonal bisecta un par de ángulos opuestos. Cada diagonal bisecta un par de ángulos opuestos. Recuerden de que bisectar quiere decir ir por el medio. All right, so in our first proof, we got to prove that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So given that JKLM is a rhombus, prove that JL is perpendicular to MK. In other words, prove that the diagonals are perpendicular. Okay, te están diciendo que JKLM es un rombo y tenemos que comprobar que los diagonales son perpendicular. Remember that upside down T there means perpendicular. Okay, recuerden que esta, este... Este signo aquí quiere decir uh, perpendicular. So, since JKLM is a rhombus, that means that segment JM has to be congruent to segment JK, okay? Um, because remember, in a, in a rhombus, all the sides are congruent. Okay, um, and because JKLM is also a parallelogram, that means segment MN is congruent to KN because the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Now, by the reflexive property of congruence, segment JN is congruent to segment JN. So triangle JNM is congruent to triangle JNK by SSS. If this is, if this is getting too, if it sounds too difficult to follow what I'm saying, let me draw it so it'll be easier to see. All right. All right, this is what they're saying. M. All right, so the first thing they said is that this side equals this side because in a, in a rhombus, all the sides are congruent. All right, then they said that... Then after that, they said that um, this segment right here, MN, is congruent to NK because... The diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Okay, and then after that, they said that segment JN is congruent to itself, segment JN, by the reflexive property. So what they've proven is side, 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 side. 
by the side 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 triangle congruency theorem the two triangles are congruent <clears throat> and like we've seen before once you prove that the two triangles are congruent you could just pick whatever corresponding parts you need um, and put the reason as cor CPCTC corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent so once they prove that these two triangles are congruent they're t saying hey um, this angle right here equals this angle right here because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent okay then after that by the linear pair theorem angles J and M and J and K have to be supplementary remember a linear pair is two angles that are next to each other that form a straight line so if they form a straight line that means that those two angles got to be supplementary so when you add them up it's got to equal 180 and since the angles are congruent, that means they got to equal each other. So by substitution, that means that each one has to equal 90 degrees, all right? And if each one of them equals 90 degrees, that means that segment JL has to be perpendicular to segment MK. Yes, this proof is a little bit annoying. If, it, if you need help on the homework, just look at the video for guidance. Again, I put in these proofs to keep to keep the logic of how to do proofs in your mind and keep you ready to do them if you need to do them, all right? Um, así que uh, en esta prueba básicamente enseñaron que los dos triángulos, estos dos triángulos son congruentes por lado, lado, lado. A la vez que enseñaron eso, si los dos triángulos son congruentes, puedo escoger cualquiera partes correspondientes necesario, como hicieron aquí y decir que son congruentes porque partes correspondientes de triángulos congruentes son congruentes. Ok, así que estos dos ángulos son congruentes. Como los dos, estos dos ángulos forman una línea, quiere decir que, que es una pareja lineal y tiene que ser suplementario. La suma te tiene que dar 180 porque una línea siempre mide 180 grados. Y como los dos ángulos son congruentes, y la suma te da 180, eso quiere decir que cada ángulo mide 90 grados. Y si cada ángulo mide 90 grados, eso quiere decir que los ángulos son rectos y que segmento JL es perpendicular a segmento MK. All right, this is another proof, and I'm just going to leave that there instead of going over it. I, I believe this is pretty much the same thing that we saw. Yeah, this is the same. I don't know why I, sh I probably shouldn't have put this in, in the review, but I, I probably put it because it's on your homework. <clears throat> so if you need help, look at this. But again, this is the same proof I just did, all right? It's basically the same steps. So I'm not going to go over it in this video again. Okay, um, esto es básicamente... En la misma prueba que acabé de hacer, lo, lo puse dos veces, está en la tarea. Si necesitan ayuda cuando están haciendo esto en la tarea, miren el video para guiarse uh, cómo hacer la prueba. All right, so let's look at these examples here. Actually, I'm going to pause the video here for one moment. Alright guys, so in this example, uh, the first thing we got to do is find XY. Alright, we got to find the measure of XY. It says use rhombus VWXY to find each measure. So the first thing I'm going to find is XY, which is this side right here. Okay, now the way to do this, it says it right here, okay? Remember that in a rhombus, all sides are congruent. All the sides are equal to each other. All right, so since they gave us the length of this side up here, it says it's 6m minus 12, as well as the length of this side right here, which is 4m plus 4, I could put that this side equals this side in order to solve for m. In order to solve for m and in order to figure out how much is each side of the rhombus. All right, so that's what they did right here. 6m minus 12 is equal to 4m plus 4. They use that equation to solve for m, m equals 8, and once you know that m equals 8, you could substitute it either right there to find out this side or over here to find out what this side is. They're both going to give you the same answer. Okay, the answer is 36, and since in a rhombus, all four sides measure the same amount, 
that means that each one of the four sides is 36. So the side that they're asking you for, X side XY, measures 36 units. All right? Um, en un rhombus, en un rombo, que diga, todos los lados son congruentes. Así que como le dieron solamente la información para este lado aquí arriba, que dice que es 6M menos 12, y este lado aquí que es 4M más 4, y los dos, esos dos lados tienen que ser congruentes, lo que hacen es una ecuación diciendo que un lado es igual a el otro. Y pueden usar esa ecuación para resolver para el valor de m, que en este caso es 8. Y a la vez que saben que m es igual a 8, lo tienen que sustituir en una de las dos eh, expresiones. O aquí para donde dice 4m más 4, o aquí arriba donde dice 6m, más 12, 6M menos 12. Los dos te van a dar la misma respuesta que es 36. Así que, y como otra vez, en un rombo todos los lados son congruentes. Si un lado es 36, eso quiere decir que todos los lados, cada uno de los lados, mide 36 también. Así que XY es 36. All right, in letter B, we got to find the measure of angle YVW. All right, this one's a little more, more trickier or challenging. All right, so you got to remember that in a rhombus, the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. Oh, wait. Let me plug this in one second. All right. So you got to remember that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. If they're perpendicular, that means that they create 90, they're 90 degree angles. All four angles are 90 degrees. All right. So angle WZX is a right angle. And the measure of angle WZX is 90 degrees. Ok, los diagonales de un rombo son perpendicular. Así que eso quiere decir que la, el ángulo WZX es un ángulo recto y mide 90 grados. Ok, so if, it's a 90, if it measures 90 degrees, but look what it says here. It says that the angle WZX is 3n squared minus 0 0.75 degrees. Okay, I could use that to solve for n. I'm going to use that expression. Since all that has to equal 90 degrees, I could use that to solve for n. And once I know what n equals, I could plug in that value of n right here to help me to figure out how much this angle is. Okay? Ya sabemos que este ángulo mide 90 grados, pero también tiene esta expresión que dice que este ángulo también es igual a 3n a la 2 menos 0.75. Así que puedo hacer una ecuación diciendo que 3n a la 2 menos 0.75 es igual a 90 para resolver para n y a la vez que sé el valor de n, lo, lo puedo sustituir aquí para encontrar el ángulo que me están pidiendo. All right, so... Um, First thing I'm going to do is move 0 0.75 to the right by adding it. Remember, there's an invisible decimal point back here. Okay, lo primero que estoy haciendo es moviendo el menos 0.75 para la derecha, sumándolo. So that's going to give me that 3n squared equals 90.75. Okay, now I'm going to divide by 3. Ahora divido por 3. Okay, and that's going to give me 30, uh, n squared equals 30.25. Now, to get n, I got to get the square root of 30.25. Okay, para encontrar n, tengo que coger la raíz cuadrada de um, 30.25. Let me use a calculator here real quick to find that. Just one moment. Okay, so the square root is going to be 5.5. Well, yeah, so n equals 5.5. Uh, since the measure of angle, then I believe what they wanted me to put here is this. 
Actually, he has it right down here. So I'm not sure what they wanted me to write in this little blank. So let me just leave it blank. I'll show I'll show it on the next slide. All right, so n equals 5.5. All right, now I could substitute the value of n, which is 5.5, right here. Okay, ahora voy a substituir el valor de n, que es 5.5 ahí, and do 9 times 5.5 plus 4. All right, so 9 times 5.5, let me do that, 9 times 5.5 equals, and then plus 4, and I get 53.5. So the measure of angle WVZ is 53.5. Okay, now there's one more step. You got to remember that since... The diagonals, it said that the diagonals bisect, like if we go back here a second, in a, in a rhombus, the diagonals bisect a pair of opposite angles. Bisect means goes through the middle. Okay, recuerden que en un rombo los diagonales bisectan un par de ángulos opuestos. O mejor dicho, cada diagonal bisecta un par de ángulos opuestos. Each diagonal, I forgot the, the word each. Each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. All right, so that means that, okay, I'm going to erase it. I have too much, too many things on the screen, 53.5. That means that if this angle right here is 53.5 degrees, that means that this one over here has to also be 53.5 degrees. So to find out how much the entire angle measures, I got to do two times 53.5, okay, uh, which is what it says here. And... There's the answer. It's 107 degrees in total. All right. Como lo, el diagonal está bisectando este ángulo y un, una parte es 53.5 grados, la otra, otra parte también tiene que medir 53.5 grados. Así que si lo multiplico por 2, me da cuánto mide el ángulo completo, que es 107 grados. All right. And actually, in this blank space, that's exactly what I was going to write. But I got confused because it said it down here also. All right, so there's there's what they wanted in that blank space. All right, let me go to the next example. All right, it says use the rhombus VWXY from example three to find each measure. This is basically the same thing I just did. And not only that, it's the exact same numbers, so I'm not even going to do it unless I'm missing something. Oh, uh, you know what? It's similar. <laughs> I'm wondering, should I do it? VWX. All right, look, let me. All right, this is the same example from here. Let me use these answers to find what it's asking me. All right, so first of all, I'm going to use this answer to save time. The measure of angle YVW is 107. So let me write that here. The measure of angle YVW equals 107 degrees. All right. And they're asking me to find the measure of angle VYX, VYX. All right, so in a rhombus, consecutive angles are supplementary. All right, if this is 107 and this is 107, all right, so this one has to be, I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything, just one second. Yeah, consecutive angles got to be supplementary. So I would just do 180 minus 107, and that means that, uh, whoops, that's wrong. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, 73. Sorry, I was looking at something else. All right, that means that, um, that means that uh, the answer would have to be 73 degrees. Let me check to make sure I'm right. Yeah, I'm right. See, it says it right there. Okay. So in, um, in a rhombus, consecutive angles are supplementary. So if this one is 103, that means this one has to measure 73. One oh three degrees. That means this one has to be 73 degrees. This one would be 103. And this one would be 73 degrees. Also remember that in a quadrilateral, when you add up all four angles, it always equals 360. There's a couple of different ways you could look at it. All right, but the easiest way is to just do 180 minus 107. 
Recuerden que en un rombo los, los ángulos consecutivos son suplementarios. La suma te tiene que dar 180. Así que para encontrar este ángulo simplemente puedo hacer 180 menos... Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to write 107. Sorry guys, I'm doing too many things at the same time, multitasking and making mistakes. Okay, um, that's better. All right, so I wrote it correctly here. All right, so just subtract 107 from 180 to get this one, okay? En, en un rombo, los, los ángulos consecu consecutivos son suplementarios, así que la suma te tiene que dar 180. Así que si restan 180 menos 107, le da la medida de este ángulo, que es 73 grados. All right, now for this one, the measure, it says find the measure of angle X, Y, Z. All right, X, Y, Z. Okay, so... Um, That's easy. We already said that this entire angle was 73 degrees. So that means that X, Y, Z has to be half of 73 degrees. Half of 73 degrees. Okay, why? Because, um, because the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each, angle, each of these angles. Okay, they're bisecting it. So if the whole thing is 73 degrees, divide 73 by 2. And you're going to get uh, 36.5 degrees. All right. Um, así que ya, ya encontramos aquí que este ángulo completo es 73 grados. Así que si quieren saber cuánto es X, Y, Z, otra vez los diagonales de un rombo bisectan este ángulo. Así que si dividen 73 por 2, te da la respuesta que sería 36.5. All right, moving on. Now, the last shape we got to go over, which is a square. A square is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides and four right angles. Notice that this combines the previous two definitions of a rectangle and a rhombus. In case you forgot, a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four 90 degree angles. And a rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. So a square is both a rhombus as well as a rectangle. Yes, you heard that correctly. A square is a type of rectangle. Así que un cuadrado es un cuadrilátero con cuatro lados congruentes y cuatro ángulos rectos. Es una combinación de las otras dos definiciones. La primera definición que vimos fue, era, hoy era un rectángulo. Un rectángulo es un cuadrilátero con cuatro ángulos rectos. Y el otro era un rombo, que es un cuadrilátero con cuatro lados congruentes. Un cuadrado es una combinación de los dos. Tiene cuatro lados congruentes y cuatro ángulos rectos. Así que un cuadrado es un rectángulo y también es un rombo. Es un tipo de rectángulo y un tipo de rombo. All right. Um... For this one, let me just put the answers. I meant to put the answer. Whoops, went too fast. All right, let's look at look at it with the answer because it's easier to talk about that way. Um, this one's quick. All right, so explain why each conditional statement is true. Actually, what I wanted to look at is this, to be honest with you. I just wanted to look at this part. So let's just look at it. What it has here is what I was just saying. Um, if a quadrilateral... You know what, let me just look at letter A just in case, because I can't remember 100% what I put on the homework. Letter A says, if a quadrilateral is a square, then it is a parallelogram. By definition, a square is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. And as we already learned, any quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides congruent is a parallelogram. So a square is a parallelogram. All right, so remember that we learned that if you got a quadrilateral and this side is congruent to this one, and this one is congruent to this one, then it has to be a parallelogram. So therefore, because a square has all four sides congruent, a square is a parallelogram. Okay, um, dice que si un cuadrilátero es un cuadrado, entonces es un paralelogramo. Y sí, eso es correcto, porque por definición, un cuadrado es un cuadrilátero con cuatro lados congruente. Y si un cuadrilátero cuadrilátero tiene do, los dos pares de lados opuestos opuesto, 
congruente, entonces tiene que ser un paralelogramo. Así que un cuadra cuadrado es un paralelogramo. No es fácil para mí decir todo eso. <laughs> All right, letter B. If a quadrilateral is a square, then it is a rectangle. Yes, because by definition, a square is a quadrilateral with four right angles. And we already saw in a previous chapter that... Um, Oh, I'm sorry, we already saw in this chapter that by definition a rectangle is also a quadrilateral with four right angles, so therefore a square is also a rectangle. This is basically saying what I just said a second ago, that a square is a rectangle and it's also a rhombus and it's also a parallelogram, all right? Así que como, como acabé de decir hace poco, um, un cuadrado es un cuadrilátero con cuatro ángulos rectos y un rectángulo por definición es un cuadrilátero con cuatro ángulos rectos. Así que eso quiere decir que el, el cuadrado es un tipo de rectángulo. If you have any questions on stuff like this on the homework, you can look at this slide and look through all the answers, all right? Eh, si en la tarea tienen duda de alguna pregunta sobre esto, miren el video, que aquí están las respuestas. All right, so this uh, diagram, let me just make sure you understand what it says. All right, this is saying that a square First of all, all of these are quadrilaterals. Everything here is a quadrilateral. A quadrilateral is a, a figure with, with four sides. A closed plane figure with four sides. All right? So a square is a rectangle as well as a rhombus. Like if you can see here, uh, the square is, makes up part of the rectangle and part of the rhombus. So a square is both a rectangle and a rhombus as well as a parallelogram. A square is, is all three of these, a rectangle, a rhombus, a parallelogram, as well as a quadrilateral. Now a rectangle, a rectangle is only, a rectangle is only a parallelogram as well as a quadrilateral, okay? But not necessarily a rhombus, all right? Because all four sides do not have to be congruent in a rectangle. And a rhombus, it's a type of parallelogram and it's a type of quadrilateral, but it's not necessarily a rectangle because a rhombus is not required to have four right angles. So I hope that makes sense what this diagram is saying, all right? Because um, you, you could use this to answer homework questions as well. All you got to do is look at the word and see what um, circle is it a part of, all right? En este diagrama está enseñando que un cuadrado es un rectángulo y también un rombo y también un paralelogramo y un cuadrilátero. Ahora, un rectángulo sí es un paralelogramo y un cuadrilátero, pero no neces necesariamente un rombo. Porque para ser un rombo tiene que tener los cuatro lados congruentes, pero esa condición no es... <coughs> No es necesario para hacer un rectángulo. Para hacer un rectángulo solamente es necesario que tenga cuatro ángulos rectos. <clears throat> Igual en este lado, un rombo es una, un cuadrilátero que tiene cuatro lados congruentes, pero no, no es necesario tener cuatro ángulos rectos. Así que un rombo puede ser un rectángulo, pero no necesariamente. Por un, si es un rombo, sí tiene que ser un paralelogramo y un cuadrilátero. Este diagrama se puede usar para, para hacer alguna de las preguntas en las tareas. All right, um, we're almost done, I think. <laughs> All right, so AB, I, I got to speed it up because I think this video is taking uh, a little bit long. It says here that um, AB equals 21. AB is 21. All right. And AD is 28. All right, so they want to know what is the value of AC plus BD. AC and BD are the diagonals. So basically, we already did this earlier today. I got this and I got this. All right, I got to use the, the Pythagorean theorem to, find, to first find the side that's missing, okay? By doing A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let me do that real quick. Voy a usar la teorema de Pythagorean para encontrar el lado que falta. El diagonal que falta aquí. All right, so let me use a calculator for that. One second, please. 
So 21 squared is 441, and 28 squared is 784. When I add those together, I get 1225. And then I got to get the square root of 1225 to find out what C is. So once I get the square root of 1225, I'm going to get C equals 35. All right. So C equals 35. However, that's not my answer because they want to know AC plus BD. All right. So just to change colors here to make it more visible. So BD, if this line is 35, okay, that means that this line is also 35 because in a rectangle, the uh, diagonals are congruent. So AC plus BD is 35 plus 35, so the answer would be 70. All right. Uh, recuerden que un rectángulo, los diagonales son congruentes, así que a la vez que yo sé este lado, este diagonal es 35 y el otro también tiene que ser 35, y la suma de los dos sería 35 más 35, que me da 70. All right, let's look at number three. It says BC equals 40 and CD equals 30. All right, let me just do it. Um, BC is 40. And CD, I was contemplating whether to do it or not, but let me go ahead and do it. All right, so, um, all right, so I'm going to use that information to uh, first find the hypotenuse, which is the diagonal. All right, so again, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 40 squared plus 30 squared equals C squared. 40 squared is 1,600 plus uh, 30 squared is 900. And when I add those up, I get 2,500. And um, the to get C, I got to get the square root of 2,500. So in this case, C is going to equal 50. All right, so, so that means that, let me use a different color. All right, so that means that BD, the length of BD is uh, 50. So BD minus AC, I feel really dumb for having done this problem. <laughs> I'll show you why right now. All right. Guys, in this one, I really didn't have to do any of this. I forgot. Um, the diagonals are congruent. So when you subtract them, if you subtract the diagonals, you're always going to get zero. So everything I just did right here was unnecessary for number three. Not for number two, but for number three, it was unnecessary. All right, so keep that in mind. If that shows up on the homework, don't make the same mistake I just did. You didn't, I didn't have to do any work, all right? Since the di I'll say it again. Since the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent, it's always going to be, if, you, if they ask you to subtract them, it'll always be the same number minus the same number. So the answer is going to be zero. And all this work I did on this, on this, on number three was unnecessary, okay? Um, en el número tres, todo este trabajo que hice para el número tres no era necesario porque la respuesta... Si te, si te están pidiendo que reste un diagonal menos el otro en un rectángulo, como los diagonales siempre miden igual, siempre va a ser el mismo número menos el mismo número. Así que la respuesta siempre va a ser cero. Así que si eso le sale en la tarea, no hagan trabajo para ese. Simplemente pongan cero para la respuesta. All right, let's look at number four. An artist connects stained glass pieces with lead strips. In this rectangular window, the strips are cut so that FH equals 34 inches. Find JG. Explain. All right, this is easy. All right, this is easy. It says um, that uh, FH is 34, okay? So um, FH is 34. So 
So if F FH is 34, that means that, uh, that the other diagonal is also 34. All right, the other diagonal also has to be 34. And since the diagonals bisect each other, that means that JG, which is just this portion, has to be half. JG, JG has to be half of 34, which equals uh, 17. All right, because the diagonals bisect, bisect each other in a rectangle. Ok, um, así que como FH, este diagonal es 34, eso quiere decir que el otro diagonal también tiene que ser congruente, tam también mide 34, y como los, en un rectángulo los diagonales bisectan uno al otro, JG tiene que ser la mitad de 34, que sería 17. Alright, moving on. All right, so let's look at number five. The rectangular gate has a diagonal brace. Find each length. Find HJ. All right, so... All right, the first one is very simple. Since it's, it's a rectangle, HJ is the same as GK. So the, it has to be 48 inches. I don't have to do any work. Make note of that so that when you're doing the homework, you can do that one easy, okay? Um... Si la medida, eh, si esto es un rectángulo, el segmento HJ tiene que medir igual que el segmento GK. Así que si GK es 48, um, HJ también tiene que ser 48. Now find HK. HK, HK. All right, HK is this. HK is this diagonal. So look, since LJ is 30.8, that means that this entire, since L j is 30.8 that means that this entire diagonal would be 30.8 times 2 which is 61.6 and hk has to measure the same as this diagonal gj so it's also going to be 61.6 all right um como este segmento lj es 30.8, entonces el diagonal completo tiene que ser 30.8 por 2, que sería 61.6, y el diagonal um, HK tiene que medir igual que el diagonal GJ, 61.6. All right, number seven, find the measure of each numbered angle in the rectangle. All right, so, um, all right, this one's very simple. Let's start with number four. In a, in a rectangle, or well actually, well, whatever. In a rectangle, all four angles got to be 90 degrees. So that's what I'm going to use to find the answer. En un rectángulo, los cuatro ángulos tienen que medir 90 grados. All right, so first of all, I guess let's do this one first. It's 90 degrees. Angle five is 90 degrees. Angle three is 90 degrees. Okay, now look, angle four has to be 90 minus 61, which is going to give you... 29 degrees okay and then for one and two remember that when you have two parallel lines that are that are being intersected by a transversal okay this angle equals this angle and this angle equals this angle alternate interior angles theorem so if this one is 61 and this one's 29 that means that this one has to be 29 and this one has to be 61 All right, so this angle right here is 29 degrees, and this angle right here is 61 degrees. Okay, recuerden que cuando tienen dos líneas paralelas que, que, que un transversal está intersectando, la medida de este ángulo va a ser la, congruente al ángulo 2 en este caso, y ángulo 4 va a ser congruente al ángulo 1. All right, just making sure I didn't make any mistakes. I don't see any mistakes, so let me continue. Okay, A, B, C, D is a rhombus. Find each measure. All right, so first I got to find A, B. A, B is this side. Okay, so remember, we already did a, a question like this. 
Remember that in rhombuses, all the sides are congruent. So what I could do is use this side and make it equal to this side to solve for x and then substitute, okay? Recuerden que en un rombo todos los lados son congruentes, así que puedo poner este lado con igual a este lado para encontrar x y después sustituir el valor de x para saber cuánto mide el lado completo. All right, so x equals 13 over 3. What a weird number to get. Did I make a mistake? 4x plus 15 equals 7x plus 2 dx. All right, I guess not. I don't see a mistake. So uh, let me see if by any chance I could, I could simplify that into a decimal, an easy decimal, that is. No. All right. <laughs> All right, so... Um, I'm really curious, did I make a mistake? All right, um, wow, this is annoying. All right, let me do it because uh, it is gonna be a fraction that we gotta use. All right, so they changed, let me leave it like that, 13 over three. All right, I was hoping I made a mistake and maybe it wasn't a fraction, but whatever. In case it's on the homework, let me leave it like that, All right? So X equals 13 over three, so now I'm gonna substitute it. Let me substitute it into, into this side right here. All right, so seven, times 13 over 3 plus 2. All right, when I multiply that, remember there's an invisible 1 beneath the 7. So on the bottom, I'm going to get 3, and on the top, I'm going to get 91 plus 2. Um, and let me see, if I change 91 over 3 to a mixed number, I'll get... Thirty and one third. All right, it's easier to use that way. All right, so if I change ninety-one over three to a mixed number by dividing it, I get thirty and one third. If you forgot how to do that, the remainder, the the number one, goes on the numerator here, and the number you're dividing by goes as the denominator. So thirty and one third plus two, that's easy to add. You'll get because I'm just adding thirty plus two, and I keep the one third on the side. All right, so that tells me that each every side in the rhombus is 32 and one third. Okay. Cada lado del rombo es 32 y uno sobre tres. Okay, substituí 13 sobre tres um, para x. Cuando lo multipliqué por 7 me dio 91 sobre tres y lo cambié de una fracción impropio a, a una fracción mezclada. Ok, dividiendo, así que sería 30, porque eso es más fácil para sumarlo con este número entero. Así que 30 y 1 sobre 3 más 2 me da 32 y 1 sobre 3. Así que cada lado del rombo mide 32 y 1 sobre 3. Just to make sure I didn't mess up. No, that's right. Ok, and then number 10, find the measure of angle ABC. ABC. Alright, so um, again, what I could do is first use this right here first use this to solve for y all right because in a rhombus the diagonals are perpendicular okay so that means that 12y has to equal 90 degrees en un rombo los diagonales son perpendicular así que 12y tiene que ser igual a 90 grados so now i do 90 divided by 12 am i gonna get a fraction for this one too uh, yeah, I got 7.5. Let me just leave it. Let me try to do it with 7.5, okay? So y equals 7.5. Okay, y igual a 7.5. Now when I substitute that, I can substitute that right here. So 4 times 7.5 minus 1. All right, um, 4 times 7.5 is 30. And 30 minus 1 is 29. Okay, so that means that, I'm going to erase all this. That means that this little angle right here is 29 degrees. And um, remember that this diagonal is bisecting this angle. So if this is 29, the other one is also 29. All right, so 2 times 29 is going to equal 58 degrees. All right, so if this angle is 58 degrees, that means this one right here has to be 180 minus 58 because consecutive angles are supplementary. 
So the angle that they're asking me for, which is this one, is going to be 122 degrees. The measure of angle ABC is going to be 122. Okay, así que a la vez que sustituye para Y, me dio que este ángulo aquí es 29, y como el diagonal está bisectando este ángulo completo, el ángulo completo sería 29 por 2, que me da 58, y como en un uh, rombo los ángulos consecutivos son suplementarios, para encontrar el que me falta, hice 180 menos 58 y me dio 122 grados. Ok. I believe there's like this one and two more slides and I'm done. I know this video is kind of long. Guys, sorry about that. But there was a lot to go over. All right, find the measure of each number, numbered angle in the rhombus. All right, so this should be fast, I hope. Um, let me just think for one second. All right, so in this rhombus, I got this line is parallel to this line. These lines are parallel, and this is the transversal. So that means if this angle is 27, angle 3 has to be 27 degrees. Okay, and um, hold on, let me think for one second. Opposite angle. All right, I'm going to have to stop. Give me one quick second, guys. Or pause, I should say. All right, guys, on this problem, uh, I forgot that in a uh, rhombus, whenever you have a rhombus, the diagonals bisect the angles, okay? So uh, what I was saying was right, but I was making it more, complica more complicated than I needed to. So if, the di if this diagonal is bisecting this angle, that means that both angles are 27 degrees and the same thing on this side. Both angles are 27 degrees. All right, so that means that this entire angle would be 27 times 2, which would be 54 degrees. Okay, now, um, so this one is 54 and this one is 54. All right, so if this is 54 degrees and this one is 54 degrees, Oops, that's, that should be a 4. All right, 54 times 2, 2 times 54, will be 108, 108 degrees. All right, and um, when you add up all the angles, wait, 2 times, yeah, and when you add up all the angles of a quadrilateral, it's always got to equal 360. All right, so if I do three, 360 minus 108, I'm going to be left with 252. 252 degrees and since both of these angles got to be congruent I could just divide 252 by 2 and that tells me that uh, each of the remaining angles has to be 126 so angle 4 is 126 and angle 1 is 126 so just to repeat the process again first of all like we said earlier when you add up all the angles all the interior angles of a quadrilateral it's always got to equal 360 okay now this diagonal bisects this angle as well as this angle so that means that if this one is 27 this one is also 27 and so so are these two all right so since both of these are 27 in total this angle is 54 and this angle is 54 when I add up 54 plus 54 I get 108 if I subtract 108 from 360 I get 252, so that means that the remaining two angles add up to 252. So if I divide 252 by 2, I get that each one is supposed to be 126. So there I have the measure of, of every single angle inside that rhombus. Um, bien rápido, en español, se me olvidó que eh, en, un en un rombo eh, los diagonales bisectan estos ángulos. Así que si este ángulo es 27, este también es 27 y estos dos también son 27. Lo que yo estaba diciendo anterior estaba bien, pero demasiado complicado. Uh, era más, es más fácil uh, de esta manera. Ok, así que cada uno de estos cuatro es 27. Ahora, uh, si cada uno de estos es 27, en total este ángulo es 54 y este ángulo es, es 54. 
Recuerden que la suma de los ángulos interiores de un cuadrilátero siempre te tiene que dar 360. Así que si yo sumo 54 más 54, eso me da 108. Si le resto 108 a 360, eso me dice que la suma de los ángulos que quedan, estos dos, tiene que ser 252. Como estos ángulos tienen que ser congruentes, si divido 252 por 2, eso me dice que cada uno de estos ángulos es 126 grados. All right, number 12. All right, so again we have a rhombus, and the opposite angles gotta be uh, congruent. So if this one is 70, that means angle 4 also has to be 70 degrees. Okay, los ángulos opuestos de un rombo tienen que ser congruente, así que si este es 70, este también es 70. All right, so again, when you add up all the angles of a quadrilateral, it's got to equal 360. So if I do 360 minus these two angles, these two angles add up to 140. So if I do 360 minus 140, I got 220. All right, so that means that when I add up all these angles here, it's got to equal 220. If I divide 220 by 2, I get 110. That means that this entire angle has to be 110. And this entire angle has to be 110. If I divide 110 by 2, because this diagonal is bisecting this angle as well as this angle. So 110 divided by 2 is uh, going to give me 52 degrees. Wait, that's not right. 110 divided by 2, let me try that again, is going to give me 55 degrees. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm very tired. All right, so that means that each one of these angles is 55 degrees. 55 55, 55, and 55. So there I have all the angles. So once again, if this one is 70, that means this one's 70. I subtracted both of them from 360, which gave me 220. That means this entire angle plus this entire angle equals 220. If I divide 220 by 2, because these two angles, like all of this and all of this, got to be congruent. So if I divide 220 by 2, that tells me that this entire angle is 110. And this entire angle is 110. And since the diagonal is bisecting these angles, I could divide 110 by 2 to find out what each one of these measures. Now let me try to say all of that in Spanish. I'm almost done. I'm sorry this video is taking so long. Okay, así que um, en un rombo los ángulos opuestos son congruentes. Así que si este es 70, este también es 70. Si le resto estos dos ángulos de 360... Porque la suma de los ángulos interiores de un cuadrilátero es 360 siempre. Si le resto 140 a, a 360, eso me da 220. ¿Ok? Así que si divido 220 por 2, me da 110. Porque este ángulo con, tiene que ser congruente a este ángulo. Así que cada uno tiene que ser 110 para que la suma me dé 220. Y como este diagonal está bisectando el ángulo, aquí y aquí, puedo dividir 110 por 2 para saber cuánto mide ángulo 2 y 3. Y ángulo... ya no veo cuál número está aquí, pero cada uno de estos ángulos. Cuando divido 110 por, por 2 me da 55. Así que con eso ya tengo la medida de todos los ángulos en el rombo. All right, so there are the answers. And the last thing I want to look at, I hope I put the answers to this. Yeah, I did. Okay, so uh, this is on your homework, all right? It's going to ask you, is a rectangle always or sometimes or never a parallelogram? Whatever, you, you could read that for yourself. You know what? I'm going to put up the answers. I, I hope you guys uh, think about each one and make sure you understand why each one is a uh, parallelogram or whatever it's asking. You could also use this diagram that we had over here. You could also use this diagram to answer that this question, okay? También pueden usar este diagrama para, para hacer esta pregunta que les estoy enseñando. Ok, pero esta pregunta está en la tarea. All right, guys, so this concludes this lesson. I know it was kind of long. The uh, homework is in the student portal, and it's due by 6 a.m. of the next class. Ok, uh, la tarea está en el portal de estudiantes y lo tienen que entregar como siempre antes de las 6 de la mañana del próximo día que tienen mi clase. All right, guys, hope you guys, you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next class.